right, so on the bench today we have a Motorola Model 5A7. Uh, these were produced from 1948 to 1949 from the information that I've read. This is another little portable set from the um, same viewer that sent me a uh, the GE over here. Uh, this is a, a little small lunchbox type portable like the GE but a little bit earlier he sent it in for repair and so here it is now uh, what I've gotten so far is pretty much nothing um, it's just kind of a unique setup I've noticed uh, there is no on and on here on the volume potentiometer um, apparently it has this magnet set up here this is either a magnet or some type of plunger switch here that operates the power to turn the set on. Now, I'm not getting anything right now and I can't really figure out why. Um, it's just completely dead. It is plugged in to the isolation transformer over there and I'm not getting any reception. I think it might have something to do with this power switch here. So let's see. Yeah, that comes out. That must be sticking. That's supposed to be that's supposed to be spring activated there. So now I'm getting a, a hum. Other than a little scratching coming probably from a dirty tuning capacitor seems to be pretty much totally dead so we'll have to get in there and definitely clean that power switch and uh, we'll need to get in here and figure out what's going on so let me uh, start disassembling this thing and see what we got to work with here's the back uh, back of the radio with the cabinet opened on the back this is where you would put your 67 and a half volt batteries back here and well batteries I say uh, I guess it's got a B battery and seems like it should have an A battery too yeah it says A battery for the tube filaments it's probably just a big D battery and then you for your B plus you'd have your 67 and a half volt battery there or uh, you can run it on wall current as I showed before well, to get that set to work you'd have to plug the line cord into this and has some sort of switch in there to switch from AC to the DC battery setup but it's always kind of cool to see these with the original labels on the back of them and that one seems to be in pretty decent shape all right so all i did to remove this chassis here was remove these two side screws here there's two on both sides they had two phillips head screws in there which i do not believe to be original but it could be i don't know but anyway those this thing just folds back up and snaps together we're going to set that aside over here and those screws go into each corner of the chassis over here so anyway looks like we got a pretty crammed up uh, type of setup here this is pretty common in older radios they compacted together to to make small but anyway we also have a uh, date of October 26 1948 so that would be the build date of this thing and it's probably sold somewhere around Christmas of 1948 so this likely was somebody's Christmas present uh, back then uh, what a great gift that would have been so Anyway, um, looks like somebody's done some patchwork on the speaker up here and put a piece of paper and some glue. Um, 
so anyway, um, he said he uh, attempted to recap this thing and it didn't work after he got done with it and said it just picked up hash and didn't really get much of anything so this will go through and uh, need to get these covers all these covers off so I can see everything and go through and compare to the schematic so what's been done and make sure everything's been done correctly and then uh, if that looks good then we'll have to try and troubleshoot what's wrong with it now this radio here um, I printed the schematic out it has one of the most detailed schematics uh, that I've uh, <laughs> run across you've got the regular schematic here on page one and then you have some service notes here uh, then they give you uh, all your voltages and all this here and then um, looks like your alignment procedure here um, more alignment procedure it shows you a layout of the tubes and looks like it's got a selenium rectifier in it which will probably need to be replaced and um, it actually gives you pictures of everything too which always makes it easier to physically locate something that may be on the schematic I always like schematics that do that Sam's is pretty good about doing that we got some more layout pictures here and then uh, on the back we even have a uh, a um, detailed uh, drawing of the, uh, the the cabinet so the parts and locations of the cabinets so that's really nice I don't hardly ever see that and then we have a detailed parts list here of what each part and its value and even down to the screws the speaker and everything so pretty good schematic uh, I wish they were all like that all right so on this little resistor here coming in off our sand resistor which is a 150 ohm dropping resistor that actually measures uh, pretty close to what it's supposed to these a lot of times they'll go out but this uh, this is a 3300 ohm um, resistor orange orange red and I about rubbed it off is why I'm telling you uh, so we can hook up to one side of it here and the other side of it here and we're getting about 6k which is <laughs> just about double the value so yeah that needs to go all right with our uh, 3300 ohm resistor replaced let's fire it back up and see what we get now well there we go we got reception we got some squealing in there with it but uh, we're getting a whole lot more than we got before it's not real clear but yeah we're getting some squealing and stuff in there but it's working so we uh, at least have something to go on now that resistor had doubled in value and um, what a lot of people don't understand is is um, let me uh, show the schematic here uh, there's a lot of people that watch this channel that know exactly what's going on but there's a lot of people in here that don't and um, this is for their benefit you got power coming in from the, rect the selenium rectifier here 
runs through our 150 ohm sand resistor is what they call those that resistor here that looks like uh, it's coated in sand they call those sand resistors goes through our 150 ohm dropping resistor goes I got about 82 volts or so over here about 75 volts over here and then when it run and then it goes on here to our dropping resistor which is up here it's a center tap dropping resistor but then we got a branch off right here it goes through our 3300 ohm resistor here well when this doubles in value you're talking about 6000 ohms instead of 3300 ohms you know well double the value would be you know 6600 ohms so but you know close enough so anyway when this doubles in value uh, you're going to see a significantly lower voltage on this side so um, in short let me explain that old resistors absorb moisture and become more resistive over time and what happens is is you get more resistance instead of you know it being the correct value it goes up in value so with these old carbon comp resistors here uh, you should go through especially in the power supply section where you have voltage going through uh, anything that gets hot uh, your audio section a lot of them will go up uh, anywhere that's hot in the radio will or anything that's you know carrying any amount of voltage in it will go up in value a lot faster than something say in the IF section or something like that but I've seen a lot of radios even in the IF section where they go up it just you know a lot of them get hot and stuff and that's what happens so anyway that's a short explanation resistors go up in value you should check your resistors uh, a lot of people have the notion that recapping radios will fix them and a lot of times it will but a lot of times it won't because the resistors have gone up in value over time and they won't work uh, they're the inappropriate value and it chokes off the power the higher the resistance the lower the power will pass through it so if you're not getting enough voltage to different sections of your radio it will not work so just a little tidbit there um, now I'm gonna go through the radio and find out why it's squealing and uh, now I've already checked these tubes and they're fine uh, from what I could tell but I'm gonna do that in a separate section of the video the owner of this radio uh, Brian he told me I could use his name on on a bit on the video he wants to see me checking the tubes on this thing I guess he wants to find out if they're all okay but I did check the couple of the st ones in the audio section they look good but we'll recheck them later all right so another little situation I need to correct here is this little setup he's got coming off the plate of this uh, 3S4 audio output tube. He's got two capacitors in parallel. The problem is, is they're 0.33. Well, if you can see that because of the glare, 0.33 microfarad. Both of them are the same they're in parallel uh, that's going to give you point uh, zero uh, six the uh, six six I measured point zero six eight the correct value for that's supposed to be on there is a point zero zero five it comes off of pin six there on the plate goes down branches into a 270 ohm resistor and then the 80 microfarad electrolytic cap there so that's going to need to be corrected we're going to need to put a 0 0.005 uh, here in place of this all right that did not take care of the squealing problem the one thing I noticed we have some rubbing plates on the 
tuning capacitor. Classic sign is this. Kind of sounds like a dirty tuner. This one you can actually get past the point where it touches. So that's where it's dead shorted. And then when you move it a little further, reception's back in. But it's rubbing, and I think I see where it is. Usually on these, it'll be the very last plate on the ends. They usually rub quite a bit. You can take a piece of paper and rub between, uh, stick between them and spread them out a little bit or pry them out a little bit or whatever, and they'll, you know, you'll be able to tell when you move it. It'll just glide like it's supposed to. Of course, a lot of that's camera noise and all that. All right, and our plate problem is uh, solved. It was the very end plate, which is bent in a little bit. Yeah, the plate shorting problem, that's, that's fixed. But we still got to figure out what the squealing is. Alright, so this is the next day. Back on this uh, Motorola um, 5A7. And I was looking up here at this audio output transformer and this thing is falling apart. Looks like it's come loose. And it's separating that can't be good so so what we can do about repairing that all right so problem number two is it looks like we've got some patchwork I don't want to call it hack work because this guy is learning and there's certainly nothing wrong with learning um, but uh, this here is the across the line capacitor here that's was soldered to this wire and then we've got a bunch of you know patchwork up here that goes this heat shrink which is definitely a good thing he did that right but then we've got this terminal strip that looks like it's broke off and he's wrapped it in tape here and then you've got this wire that goes all the way back to the selenium rectifier here this blue wire so you know the factory routed this thing all the way around the radio like that it probably would be better to route it from here to there but I'm not going to do that because uh, a lot of times the factory routes this stuff certain ways to eliminate interference noise squealing and stuff like that if you get to messing around with the circuit a little you know and take it out of its original design uh, you could have problems and squealing could be one of them because the way they design things they route them in a certain way that you know to eliminate a, some sort of problem there's a reason why the engineers designed it that way so I like to keep that but we're going to need to we're going to need to clean this up here and put a new terminal strip in this wiring job here just ain't going to work this broke off from here so we need to put in a something to repair that all right, we got it. Uh, our squealing problem located. Of course, that's camera oscillation there, but picking up 970 uh, about 45 miles away. So uh, just on the uh, internal loop there. But we've got our squealing problem resolved. Volume wide open, no squealing. Let me go ahead and point out. Uh, go ahead and point out some mistakes here that were made in this filter capacitor setup here 
this wire here which goes to the power switch was hooked to the positive side of that 22 microfarad capacitor and the this green wire here was hooked to the negative side of where he's got the, all three of these joined together the simple mistake they were they were swapped backwards and so this is the ground point here because of the filter capacitor here is hooked into the power switch and it's the negative side there and this is the positive side all the negative sides all hooked together so that was uh, this wire was on the positive side of this capacitor here these two were reversed and once I put them back in the correct order according to the schematic here everything's working great now so um, and then also uh, we rerouted this across the line capacitor here put it back on a terminal strip and I'm thinking that this may need a terminal strip too uh, this is kind of not really great setup here and it's kind of hard to heat shrink all this to keep it from touching because of how close it is to these capacitors um, you know you could slide some heat shrink over back down this way but you're gonna have trouble sliding over the connection but I'm gonna see what I can do about cleaning this up uh, I kind of hate just wrap tape around it because tape eventually will come undone but we've got to find some way to insulate all this and clean this up this capacitor here is a real huge overkill it's a hundred microfarad at 400 volts and uh, the factory uh, capacitor is an 80 at 25 volts so I've got this hundred at 35 volts I think I'm gonna put that in there and replace that and um, you know kind of eliminate this whole setup here but oh that that capacitor is a huge overkill All right, so we got this filter cap section cleaned up here. Here's our three filter capacitors wrapped in heat shrink and got our, each, each of our wires here, lead wires going in here, each wrapped in heat shrink. And then we got this uh, changed out from this overkill here. Yeah, I mean it works, but uh, it's okay to go up a little bit, but I think 400 volts that probably be suited for better for something like a You know pre-war set something with a transformer in it uh, uh, Utilize that 400 volt capacity a lot better than just this little low voltage application, which is you know rated at a maximum of 25 volts I could probably take a voltage reading from that and it probably ain't no more than 10 or 20 volts at the most so anyway we uh, we got all this back together and um, one thing that I've noticed is this thing works a whole lot better on this isolation transformer than it does plug directly into the uh, power outlet and the reason why that is is because the output voltage of this um, isolation transformer is uh, about 124 volts, 123, 124 volts. Coming out of the wall there, it's about 118 volts. So you put a little bit more voltage in this set, it works better. And that tells me one thing. Probably got a weak selenium rectifier. Uh, it's a good idea to change these things out anyway as preventative maintenance. But this one shows signs of uh, not getting enough voltage. Now, why I don't know that immediately, uh, or didn't know that immediately, and uh, is because the voltages for this radio are not listed on the schematic as far as on the regular schematic. And I've gone through these voltage readings here and it gives you voltage readings for the tube pins but not directly from the selenium rectifier so i'm going to show you this here 
normally on a schematic when the voltage comes out of the selenium rectifier there'll be a voltage reading somewhere on this side of it to tell you what kind of B plus you're supposed to be getting um, from prior experience and um, you know doing these before and and that sort of thing um, I can get uh, a roundabout an idea of what the voltage is supposed to be this setup here is a little more tight if you will as far as the voltages because these one one point three or one point four volt tubes are kind of sensitive to voltage um, you don't want to put too much into them or you'll blow the filaments on them so we're gonna have to figure out how far off our tube voltages are here um, as opposed to you know what what I'm getting as opposed to what's on here and that'll kind of give us an idea of what voltage range we're we need to be operating at on this uh, on the B plus uh, like I said it doesn't doesn't give me any sort of uh, measurements as far as uh, what uh, how much B plus I'm supposed to be getting out of that selenium rectifier now with it plugged into here I'm getting about 94 volts uh, coming out of the selenium and with it plugged into the wall I'm getting about 91 volts so I'm thinking that needs to be a little bit higher somewhere you know around 115 110 something like that uh, and I've seen some of them as high as 130 volts coming out of the selenium uh, and even higher sometimes 140 it, it just depends on the radio a lot of the AA5s are, you know, around that range, about 130 volts, 125, 130 volts. Um, I'm not sure if this one's, uh, you know, a whole, it, I don't think this one's quite that high. I wouldn't think, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll get into that here. I'm going to start checking some voltages on these tubes and stuff. And I'm also going to run this selenium for a while and see... Uh, I'm just going to run the radio for a while and see what happens as far as the B plus see if it drops off after it starts heating up and that'll give me a better idea too if that selenium is weak which I'm pretty sure it is because there is a drastic reception difference between plugging it in that and plugging it in the wall all right I'm gonna try to do this without hopefully the camera won't interfere with it too much now you hear the reception and that's squealing a little bit all right I don't want to get a copyright strike but you can hear quite a bit of more fuzz and in the reception the first time I had it plugged into the wall and then the second uh, when I moved it over to the isolation transformer, it's a lot clearer. So that tells me the set's probably not getting enough power. All right, so with the Variac, I've been able to do a, a kind of an interesting experiment with the power here. It's it's kind of hard to see this voltmeter, so I'm going to put it right here. Hopefully, there's no glare on it. Right around 80 volts is when the radio stops working, but this actually allows me to up the voltage higher than what I'm even what I'm getting out of the wall and what I'm even getting out of the isolation transformer. You watch the voltage as I increase it. The radio comes back in. And it fades out around 81, 82 volts. Out of the wall we're getting about 91 92 volts okay better turn that down I don't want to it's hard to get a station around here uh, that just talks that's sort of distant um, stand by a second 
Alright, here's a distant talking station here, so... Alright, so radio goes on around 81, 82 volts. Step that back up. So we're back up to what comes out of the isolation transformer, which is about 97 volts. If I increase it even more, we can get it up to about 115 volts. Now there's a lot of static in that, but there's a lot more gain coming from the audio. Radio gets more robust and uh, starts working a lot better. So I think we're starved of voltage. I, th I think we, uh, I'm going to try to replace that selenium rectifier and put a appropriate dropping resistor with a diode and see how that works out for us. All right, so taking a, some tube voltage measurements, around about 105, 106 volts is where we need to be at. We got 65 volts right there on that um, on the plate of the um, 3S4 tube. That's supposed to be 65, and right here is supposed to be around 70. I'm getting about 67 or so there, and a couple of these other measurements in the IF section. The B plus measurements on those uh, plate voltages and stuff like that are about where they need to be. And getting that, we're we're putting out about 106 volts out of the selenium rectifier. So that's about the target voltage I'm gonna use. If you crank it up even higher, like I was earlier, if you crank it up higher and you don't have a signal coming in, you start getting a hum through the speaker. So. I think we're over volting it a little bit, so to be safe, that's where I'm going to leave it, where these factory voltages are about where they're supposed to be at. That's the safest bet. All right, I tell you, this, this little radio is uh, working pretty good. We got our uh, diode here and our dropping resistor back there. I went with a 100 ohm resistor. With 100 ohms. Out of the wall, we're getting right at dead on 106 volts. So that was perfect. This thing is really sensitive. I just got it hooked to the loop antenna, which is in this front cover part. I've just got it clip leaded in. I mean, it's just, you know. There's 970. This coming in real clear. That's another music station. I have no idea where that's at. You can choose not to watch the Game of Thrones finale. But if you do, it'll probably be you and me and like three other people in the entire United States that aren't sitting in front of HBO watching. It's four o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, there'll be more people in that. Here's my thing. It'll be a little I early for uh, DX coming in, but like this it. thing is it's picking up stuff quite stuff well. The Lord of the Rings stuff. What you have, your 401k, your vision plan, your savings. But George, he is the absolute assigned two of Paul's fellow workers, Gaius and Eric. There's another music station. That's a good song, R.E.M. But I don't want to leave it on there and get a copyright strike. I've already probably got some borderline ones in this video already. Yep, we'll talk about just about anything. And our show is interactive. Your phone calls will always be welcome. To this subway ad for the new club collection. How do you want it? I'll take a book club. I think that's a 970. 
really really clear for 970. Advertise a North Carolina lottery, so that must be a North Carolina station. I'm about two hours from closest point in North Carolina. Trying to figure out where that station's at, because this radio, it's a pretty good receiver for a little portable, man. I mean, that's... Got a pretty hot receive on it. You can hear the conditions changing in the signal up and down there. They they are on the air as a rock FMs, but they have a transmitter uh, on 970 AM as well. So this thing's working great. I think I'm just going to leave it alone right where it's at. It it's performing very very good. It's a good receiver. You know. Uh, not the best sound quality out of this little tiny speaker, but it, it, it's really good for, it's working really well. So, I think I'll run through and check these tubes before I put it back in the case. Uh, he, uh, he wanted to see that. Brian wanted to see the owner of the set, wanted to see the tubes being checked. So, we'll do that and, um, we'll put it back in the cabinet and see how she works, uh, inside the case. This something i want to point out on this set a lot of times you can get by with this and bigger sets and stuff that's you know got more room in it but this has a metal cover that i've showed earlier that goes over the top of this and with that in mind you don't want to tack in your capacitors like this you want to do them like this you want to put some heat shrink tubing over them and instead of cutting the old capacitor out at the terminal where it's you know soldered in at you want to just cut that off and then tack it you know solder in a new one all the way from point to point these capacitors come with pretty long leads on them when you get them these yellow capacitors that's one reason why I like them kind of shaped like the originals and they're but they're much smaller and they fit good and you know instead of tacking them in like that you know you just run them all the way down and run heat shrink tubing on them put your heat shrink tubing on solder your end and then you can pull it back down you can kind of push your heat shrink tubing back up to keep it away from the hot solder joint and do it that way but in order to save these capacitors, because I'm, I would assume they're probably fairly new, I'm just going to run some heat shrink tubing down over the top of this and then make it long enough. Sometimes you can get away with putting a smaller piece on and then a larger piece, which is what I did here. You, that way you got... That way you got two... You know, you got one that'll slide over the top of the other, and you, you can seal them like that, and that works a little bit better. So, I think I'm going to probably pull this old asbestos tubing off, and then just run um, some um, heat shrink tubing down over that, 
and then put a larger piece up here towards the top slide it down solder it back together and then pull it over and and then shrink it, it should uh, should turn out okay but um, you know when you're tacking your <laughs> excuse me when you're replacing your capacitors yeah, you know, avoid tacking stuff like this in tight quarter areas because you're going to end up with shorts. Yeah, so this is what I do in this kind of case here. You put your small heat shrink over that, then you take your little bit bigger piece, and then run it down like that. And then you can solder your connection, and then you can pull this back up over it when you're done. All right, checking our one R five RF and oscillator tube looks like it's uh, about halfway kind of in the weak category might want to think about replacing that one pretty soon it's probably still got quite a ways on it because the radio picks up really good so that is a Delmonica Japanese made tube so all right checking our 1U4 first IF tube Oh yeah, we're plenty good there. What is it, about 740 out of a thousand. Alright, checking our 1S5, which is our um, detector and first audio and ABC works off this one too. Uh, yeah, a little over 900 out of a thousand. That's an excellent, excellent tube there. All right, and uh, uh, by the way, I've already checked both of these tubes. Uh, one I just checked and this one off camera before, but I'm just letting everybody see what they check. Uh, this is a 3S4 uh, audio output tube. About 800, about 810, 815 out of 1,000. So yeah, definitely a, a good tube, no problems there. All right, all back in in the cabinet it's been sitting here playing for about three hours now everything seems to be good i'm waiting for the dx to come in so i could do a little band scan and we could call this one ready ready to roll Radio seems to be real sensitive. A whole lot more sensitive than most of these portables that I've run into. So folks, we've got one more segment. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about birth control, birth control pills. Because the higher the visceral fat, the more your body's insulin levels are disrupted. You may not even be glad that. to Shrek and we're going to listen to Mac coming up. We have a boot camp coming up and it's coming up November 7th through 10th. So go to maskandrunyradio.org to register now. Not in your bloodline. You must not allow the enemy to steal your victory time. Dream about and notice these results in 30 minutes. Hard to believe neuroscientists are calling this new brain discovery the biggest advance. Sounds like uh, 880 out of New York. Limitless, the brain pill of the future. Take it and within 30 minutes you'll transport your mind to a new level of focus and clarity you would have never thought possible. I took Limitless and it started or download the free app. You know, when you think outdoors, think Secure Turf. John Hancock here for the Carolina Premier Outdoor Solutions Provider. You know, I think...
there's nothing small about your business. Your impact on the community. Is News, the weapon Iraqi militias used was most likely acquired from Iran. And President Trump in a tweet tonight says if Iran wants a fight, it'll be its last. <laughs> WNIS. Don't know where that's at. All right, well, there's that uh, 1948, 1949 uh, Motorola 5A7A. Um, that's kind of a mouthful. Uh, we got it playing again, so hopefully uh, he should be happy with it. So and it'll play for many more years to come. Appreciate all y'all watching.